better fall back. Nah, get this work. You should have wore a hard hat. They told us to work in the summer. I told them I'm working on something. I'm winning my battle, no propaganda. Why you flexing in your Panamera? Get back, right. 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 Lost my cool. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. Good morning, everybody. I hope you are doing well. Doing pretty good. It is Monday morning, March. I dance a lot better sitting down than I do getting up. Good morning, Miss Exuberant. How are you? I'm doing good. Got some wonderful things I want to share today. Listen, y'all. <clears throat> Let me take a sip before I even get started. All right. So, um, it is Monday morning, March the 8th. March the 8th. How blessed are we? Lost my cool. I lost my cool. Who be Has anybody else lost their cool? Let me put a little bit of my cover on. 
I usually don't, I don't use foundation as, as a usual, but there are a couple of little spots I need to get straight. Like, I'm going to get me some, uh, uh, good morning. You want some too, boo? I'm uh, going to get some new classic, classic glasses here uh, in a couple months. Because my glasses, I like my friends, but they've been beating my, they've been beating my nose up. And I don't understand why. They, me, and, me and my friends were cool. We were cool for the longest. And then all of a sudden, excuse me, they, they started to put the squeeze on me. I'm like, what the heck? Anyway, listen. Are y'all ready to move forward in your faith? I am ready. I'm ready to do some new things. I'm ready. Listen, there, we ain't going to be able to do anything new without faith. It's going to take faith. It's going to take new faith. It's going to take moving into new arenas with faith, y'all. So listen. Y'all make sure you have something to write with. Miss Exuberant. I love her, love her, love her. She's like a narrator. Just doing her thing. Hearing God. She has to be a student. Listen, in order to keep moving forward, you got to be a student of the word. And I'm going to be talking about some of those elements uh, this week. We're going to talk about letting faith lead. We've got to let faith lead. I am so done with my emotions leading me. Like I'm in faith and then I'm not. I'm in faith and then I'm in my emotions. I'm in faith and then I'm not. So, <clears throat> you've got to learn to let faith lead on a consistent basis can you say on a consistent basis can you say you want are you done with the are you done with the roller coaster so listen we've got to be aware i'm, I'm really learning to tailor my words because every word is a seed okay let me help you out i'm gonna do a little pre-teaching before the teaching let me let me let me talk to holy spirit first so holy spirit i thank you first of all you said if any man lacks wisdom james 1 and 8 if any man lacks wisdom let him ask of god who gives liberally without reproach without upbraiding without being angry or upset that we're asking and it will be given to us god but we have to ask in faith with nothing wavering because we cannot be double-minded when we ask you, God. We got to know that we know that we know you are our Father, number one. You love us, number two. And you want to give us your wisdom. It says, because a man who is double-minded is unstable in all of his waves. We would be like the waves on a sea just tossed to and fro, back and forth. Hither and a thither. God, I don't want to be tossed no more. I'm done with being tossed. I want to be stable in you, God. So, God, we thank you for your wisdom that you're going to give this morning. I honor you, and I'm excited to hear what you have to say to God. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, you have to be intentional about the words that you use. You have to be intentional. If you're taking notes, please write that down. I must be intentional about the words that I use. Take the word tired out of your vocabulary. You have to. Take the word tired out of your vocabulary. Now, if you now I'm I'm not talking about at the end of the day and you need to go to bed. I'm talking about being tired of this, being tired of that. That word tired translates, it translates throughout your body and throughout your life. If you say you're tired of this and tired of that, it begins to have a physical effect on you because words are seed. Now, you can use a word like frustrated. Frustration is uh, an expression and an example of mental weariness. That's a good word. 
of mental weariness. You can say, I'm frustrated with this. This this has me at a place of frustration. But to say tired, tired is a term to describe a physical disposition. Who uses the word tired? A lot. <laughs> Words are powerful. Death and life is in your tongue, boo. Stop using words that describe a physical disposition. I'm tired of going to work. I'm tired of you. You make me tired. I'm s listen, listen. I'm sick and tired. Oh my. All right, I ain't got no. I only got one brave person that is willing to save me. I'm sick and tired of this. I'm sick and tired of that. And what's happening in your body? What's happening in you? Words are powerful. Death and life is in your tongue. And the enemy is looking and waiting for an opening to express his agenda to steal, kill, and destroy. Yep, Miss Exuberant, it manifests. Through our words. So yes, I'm frustrated or um, I'm overthinking this or that's why I use the word done. I said, I'm done with this. I am done with this. Those are more, that's a more exact, that's a cutting off word. I'm done with loose faith. Faith for this, no faith for that. Faith for this, no faith for that. I'm done with allowing the enemy to send his demonic pop-ups to get me to shift and change my mind. Demonic pop-ups are like pop-ups um, while you're online and you're searching. Now they have um, different fail-safes in place to prevent pop-ups. But y'all, have y'all experienced pop-ups? I mean, you surfing, you looking for something, and then all of a sudden... The stuff starts popping up. Sometimes filthy stuff pops up. Anybody want to talk to me about that this morning? I know it's early. You ain't got to tell me. I know. I'm thankful too. And, um, and that's how thoughts are. Let me tell you something, baby. Every thought that pops into your head is not yours. Who needed to hear that? Every thought that pops into your head, baby, is not your thought. That should have set somebody free. That should have gave you some kind of relief. Because the enemy will make you think you are stone cold tripping. He will make you think you need to go and sign yourself in somewhere. Make you think, wait a minute, what is, what is, what, what? I'm glad, baby, I'm glad you found the Lord. Because I'm telling you, I have to remind myself sometimes. I mean, I'll just get a pop-up here, pop-up there. You don't like, a, you don't like that. They don't like you. And you be thinking like, oh my God, what? Am I sick? Am I in sin? Am I in sin, Jesus? Do I have a reprobate mind? <laughs> And then the Lord is like, you do know every thought you think is not your thought. And I'm like, <clears throat> right, straightening my chair. You know, straightening your chair up in your mind and then girding up the loins of your mind and getting ready for this crazy demonic warfare that the enemy is going to keep slapping you with to put pressure on you to get you to cave. You don't like her. She think you stupid. You're ugly. You're dumb. You don't have enough. Don't do that. And it's good stuff too. I'm going to call so-and-so and, and just tell her I love her. Don't do that. She's dumb. She don't like you. It's stupid. You're ugly. Everything's going to hell. It's the last days. You're going to die. Forget it. <laughs> don't do that. Don't talk to them. 
It's stupid. Pop ups. So I got I got a couple people that was willing to admit, thank you, my sisters, that demonic pop ups happen. You can't do that. It's stupid. Don't do it. You wasting your time. And you like. Those are those fiery darts. Those are the darts. Demonic pop-ups are fiery darts of the enemy. You know what he's doing? He is the master, so he's the counterfeit. So Jesus said that he wanted to make us fishers of men, okay? And that fish is the symbol, of course, for, you know, salvation, right? But... The enemy also fishes, but his is the P, what is that? P-H, that P-H-I-S-H. He fishes too, and he fishes with demonic pop-ups. And the demonic pop-ups that he used are actually things that you might have thought at one time and also things that might have been said to you from years and years ago. It's not going to work. And that's how it feels. You know the whack-a-mole game at the arcade? And you, you know, you're hitting all over the place. Anybody get pop-up during the, uh, meetings? Zoom meetings or in-person meetings? You're sitting there and all of these things are happening in your head. And you trying to keep your cool even under your mask. Because <laughs> you know your eyes can talk, right? Has anybody learned how to control their eye language? Did you see that micro, that micro movement? My eyebrows. I talking. Okay. I'm happy. <laughs> you get on my nerves. The eye roll. We got all this covered up, but these eyes are still there. All right, let me get on into my teaching. I ain't got nobody talking. Ain't nobody talking on him, Mrs. Zuber. Everybody is. is all right, so I heard this wonderful thing by um, Mel Robbins. And I wanted to share this. So listen, I'm going to do better with not over promising <laughs> and under uh, performing. It has always been my purpose and it is my purpose to do the things I said I'm going to do. And there's no excuse. So this is what I will. This is what I'll promise. I'll promise that although... I may not post the notes every day on my website because that's a little bit of a process. It's not really hard, but it's just sitting down and doing it, right? I will make sure that you screen shoot the notes. Screen shoot. So with that in mind, I'm going to go ahead and turn this over and then we're going to get going. It's my purpose to be done at 7 o'clock in the a.m. I make no promises on that, honey. No, but it is my purpose, my determined purpose. So let me turn this around so you guys can get the notes, okay? Excuse any spelling errors. Uh, uh, FYI, I am not a good... Sp FYI, I have had challenges in it with my spelling. You see how that change just happened? Did you catch that? I've had challenges. I have a challenge. I'm challenged in my ability to spell. I always have been. But uh, don't stop God. Dance break. Y'all ain't with me. Miss Exuberant is. No 
Rose TV Johnny for the gold. Them was the goals. Never cared about my soul. I can wait till I get old. I'm on these hold up. Wait a minute, new beginnings. I was down, now I'm winning. I know who did it and I don't forget it. You know I'm still about to find it business. I gotta get back. Get back, right? Get back, right? Get back, right? Get back, right? Okay, <clears throat> I'm about to turn my fan around too because I drank my workout juice and I still got some more steps to do. I'm going to get ready to turn this around so you guys can see the notes. Thank you guys. If this is your first time, uh, you're <laughs> thinking about the word tired. We, we, we have to. We have to be intentional. You have to be intentional about your words. So I'm going to turn this around. I hope my fan don't fall. Either up between uh, drinking my workout juice and not working out as intensely as I need to and or. Hot flashing, honey. All right, let me get going here. Focus, Lacey. I'm trying to focus. Okay. I wish I could dance for real. I wish I could do all those TikTok dances. All right, here we go. I'm gonna hold this up so you guys can screen shoot it. I I don't I think that's the right term. Why is shooting shot spelled the same way? No, shoot. Stop lacing. Just show the notes. Okay, here we go. Let me see if I can. Let me get this lined up. Okay, because it's quite a bit. All right. All right, you guys see that? I'm going to try to bring it in a little bit and center it. Let me know when you got it, okay? One, two. Let me know when you got it. Those are actually uh, numbers on the side. I don't know why my numbers showed up so light. Anybody getting this? I need to see some goddess. There you go. All right, I'm going to give a count of 10. Because this is my arm hurt. One, two, three, four, uh-oh. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Woo! Oh, that hurt my arms, honey. Okay, I'm going to flip it back over so we can get going. I hope you guys were able to <clears throat> take the notes, um, screen shoot the notes. I am finding out, I'm finding out the keeping promises. This isn't on the note. This is extra. I'm finding out the keeping promises start with you. So if you can't keep a promise, if you refuse, you know what? It's not even about, it's more of a refusal. There's this part of us that uh, is rebellious and all of us. There's a part of us that's like, I ain't doing it. And we have to, that part has to be transformed in all of us. I'm gonna raise my hand. I'm 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 always gonna be the first one to raise my hand. So there's always a part of us that um, that deals with rebellion, and that's the part that that through the Word of God and through the principles of the Word that we're able to keep under, because it's part of the endemic nature in us. And keeping promises is one of them. So I heard Mel Robbins this morning. She said the first promise that you make and you keep to yourself has to do with the alarms. The alarm clock. So when you set your alarm at night, you are making a promise. And when you set that alarm, you have stated that you that you've made a promise and actually getting up when the alarm goes off as you keeping a promise now of course we add in the, you know of course the grace of god and his mercy is new every morning but we had these choices that we have to make and 
every, all right, this is what I'm getting to. Every area of change, discipline is the demand. I'm going to say that again. Every area of change, every area in your life that you desire to change, the discipline is the demand. Discipline has to be the stake in the ground that you have determined. You have decided a decisive decision every day to keep that promise, to save money, to exercise, to work out, to read your morning confessions. These are promises that you keep to yourself. If there's an issue, let me know. If there's an issue with you keeping promises to yourself. So we can't demand something from someone else that we refuse to do ourselves. I ain't got no help right there. We cannot demand something from someone else that we refuse to do ourselves. I cannot demand people to show up for me when I don't show up for me. I ain't got no help. I cannot be angry when somebody else does not show up for my life and I'm not showing up for my life and I check out on me. Does that make sense or is it just me? Because I find that all of us in some way or another love the overpromising, love the fact that we want people to be there for us. And then we throw shade there. Of course, that's very prevalent in social media, right? People throwing shade all over the place and refuse to throw the shade on themselves. And like uh, uh, Eric Thomas, the hip hop preacher saying, when are you going to hold you accountable? When you gonna look you in the face and tell you, you owe me, you owe me to keep your promise to me. You said you were gonna drink more water. You said you were gonna go to sleep earlier. You said you were gonna go to bed. You said you were gonna exercise. When are you gonna look you in the face and start to hold you accountable for the promises that we don't keep to ourselves? And let me help you out. This is another little sad note. Now I'm going to get to my notes. People don't leave you. I'm going to say, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do this little mini teaching within this teaching. There is no such thing as rejection. The only place where true rejection happens is all right in that scripture with uh, over in Isaiah 53 where it says he was despised and rejected of men everybody else you're not rejected and I'm gonna tell you why let me put some whys in there why am I not rejected I feel like it go ahead I'm gonna challenge you put in the comment why there's no such thing as rejection I'm gonna tell you why go ahead ask me why I'm gonna wait I'm put my music up and I'm away. If you really want to know, ask why. I see a why in there. I see another why. Come on. Give me a couple more. Yep, that's it. That's it right there. Bad girl scripture. You was despising with your why? Okay. A couple more whys. There's enough of y'all on there. Do you want to know? Because I believe this is going to help you. I believe this is going to set you free. This is going to be a major piece. Okay, you ready. There you go. Okay, why? Number one, the reason why there is no such thing as rejection is because, well, number one, my friend did put in there about being accepted in the beloved, okay? But when it comes to people, people never reject us. 
They just don't know how to be present with us. Did you write that down? They don't know how to be present. They don't know how to be present to the moment with you. Don't you know some of us was in the womb of our mothers and our mothers were not present with us? Oh, that just set somebody free. I believe that set somebody free. I believe that just helped you. Some of us had this feeling of rejection, but there, but rejection isn't real. We were in the womb and our parent, our mother was not present to the moment with us. She was living a completely different life and she was everywhere else. And so that moved from in the womb, okay? Then we get out into the world and still people were not present to the moment with us. Who did that just help? They don't know how to be present. There's a reality of being right here. And being 10 years in the past. You know the song? Your body's here with me. But your mind is on the other side of town. That's an old song. Stop messing me around. Well, your body's here with me. But your mind is about 20 years ago. Where did you go? That is what we're dealing with. We're dealing with people who are not present with us who are not present to the moment that's what i like to this is what i like to do when i'm talking about dealing with present to the moment and sometimes i have to during the day just i don't know just tap myself on the head it's called frontal thinking thinking right up here not all back here dark crevices 15 20 years ago looking down in the basement of my life but right here in front Wake up, Lacey. Right here. Right here. Be right here. And people don't know how to be. So, this is what I really believe. And I did a couple of videos about that, too. I don't know. Maybe a a couple months ago, maybe. In order to walk in the newness of life for your life. And giving you the ability to forgive and release. Because a new compassion rises up within you. Because you understand, guess what? My mama wasn't present to the moment. Because of so much chaos that was going on in her life. Wow, God. And then I started putting myself in her place. It's called empathy. I said, wow. Let's see. She was 22 years old and she had three kids all under the age of five. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let me think. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I said, my goodness, my mother, she was 20. She was 22 and she had three kids under the age of five. I'm like, dang. That was hard. My brother was four. I was two. And my baby sister was born. I'm like, oh my goodness. So what empathy does, empathy is is put you, is it's call, it causes you to put yourself in that person's place, in your imagination, and you develop a different sense of compassion for them. And you say, oh my God, that, that was crazy. Had to be 22, and, and re- regardless to how, you know? And I'm like, she was young, she was 22, she had three kids all under the age of five. And I'm like, my God, how did she do that? And then you get a different heart of compassion. And you're like, you're able to breathe. 
And say, my Lord, that had to have been hard. And she was doing it by herself, too. And even for guys who did have two parents, that was hard. It's hard being a parent. It's hard having all of your chaos in your head and trying to raise babies, too. It's a challenge. So let me get on to my notes. I just wanted to, I just wanted to drop that. That there's no such thing as rejection. There's just people that aren't able to be present to the moment with you. And then understand how present to the moment are we with other people? You see what I'm saying? And so it, it gives us, I, that's what the reality of that scripture is all about. Judge not, least you be judged. Because with the same measurement, you measure out is going to be measured back to you. In other words, how could we expect people to be there for us when we're not there for ourselves? And, and, and where proper self-reflection and self-introspection happens. And then we're able to say, wow, God, I know I done checked out on myself a lot. I've checked out on myself a lot. And so I'm like, okay, God, you know what? I can extend grace and mercy. I can say, my goodness, God, I forgive her. Because I cannot imagine being 22 and having three little kids to deal with. With all of the chaos of life. Trying to work. Trying to be in your own place. Any kind of relationships. Past baggage. And she had all of that going on. And had three little babies to deal with. Can you extend some grace and some mercy? And then all of us on here who are parents know how hard it is to be a parent. Even these days, that is that is the most difficult job. And each individual child, you do not spit that child out of your womb and then an instruction manual with that baby. I'm not talking about the word of God. The word of God is instruction for everything. I'm talking about for that individual child because every child is an individual. You cannot raise every child the same. Love, compassion, understanding, discipline, yes. But every child has a different temperament, a different personality. They're a different person and it is extremely difficult. And guess what? When they become adults, <laughs> you have to try your hardest not to be in Superman mode and allow them their mistakes. Oh, allow them their mistakes. Deep breath in, deep breath out. All right, let's get to some notes for today. All right. Let faith lead. I am determined to let my faith lead. My faith in my father lead. Not faith in myself. Honey, I'm all over the place sometimes. Let my faith in my father lead. He's the one that said, I want you to cast your cares on me. Because I care for you. And I can carry it. He can carry it. He's the one that says, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Come to me if you're burdened and heavy laden. If you're heavy laid down, weighed down with burdens. And I'll give you rest. He's talking about a holy exchange. He's talking about you exchanging what troubles your heart. Give it to me. And then I will give you what I have. Which is peace. Rest assurance, confidence in him. Who needs to be more, who needs to be more confident? Who need to be more confident in the savior? Who need to be more confident in their father? I know I do. So let me tell you a couple things. So this was a wonderful note from yesterday's teaching at my church. He said, the pressure is for your freedom. So there's two kinds of pressure. Write down two kinds of pressure. There's two kinds of pressure. There's going to be, did I write that down? 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I'm skipping notes here. There will always be two kinds of pressure. The pressure to do the God thing will always lead you through the dark place into freedom. Tell me what kind of pressure you're feeling. Are you feeling the pressure to do right? Are you feeling the pressure to do wrong? There is a pressure. So there's a pressure to do the God thing. There's a, a, a holy pressure because God is trying to get the real you out. God is, all right, Philippians 1 and 6, that he is always working, okay? He's going to work with us in order to, to, to complete the work that he started. He is intentional. Listen, God is intentional. He's not sleeping on us. He's always present to the moment with us. And he is always intentional about getting the real us out. Last week, chatted a little bit about, you know, puzzles and puzzle pieces and that each one of us is a very unique puzzle that Father God wants to partner with us to do right. To, 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 to get the real us out. That's how I like to say. To get the real us out. And sometimes we feel like a puzzle. We feel like a mess, actually. But Father's like, this is exactly what I, this is exactly what I need right here. Because what happens is that we partner with him and we go into that place and we sit at the table with him and say, okay, God, this looks like a mess. And he's like, it's absolutely perfect. Baby, you're, as, you, you're absolutely perfect. He has the blueprint for your life. Did that hit somebody different? You think you're a mess? He's like, this is perfect. Ain't no hands up. Everybody hands go up. So his pressure, his pressure to do the God thing will always lead through the dark place into freedom. Listen, the pressure of the enemy is to stay stuck. Listen, by trying to convince you, you will be safe by doing nothing. The pressure of the enemy is to get you to stay stuck by trying to convince you you'll be safe by doing nothing. The enemy loves for us to do absolutely nothing. So think of this. You're in a rowboat in the middle of the lake. You have oars to row, but you're sitting there. Sitting there doing nothing is the enemy saying, you can't do it. You don't have any strength. It's not going to matter. Stay where you're safe. Taking those oars and rowing, that's pressure too. But the pressure of rowing is getting you somewhere. It's getting you to land. Getting you moving forward. How many of us have felt like we've been out in the middle of a lake in some areas of our life? Enhanced? You... Your finance, your relationships, your health, your mental state. I feel like you've just been sitting out in the middle of a lake, just sitting there. I know I, you know, what's the one area I'm like, hey, get back, right, hey, ooh, I give it. And other areas I'm like, uh, your job. 
your forward momentum, your work, your book writing, your painting, whatever that thing God has given you to do. And you're just sitting out in the middle of the lake. But God has always given us tools. So remember, there's going to be two kinds of pressure. All of us are going to be, all of us are going to deal with two kinds of pressure. So you might as well be on the side that you know you're going to win. Be on the side that you know you're going to roll yourself out of pressure. You're going to roll yourself through the darkness. And we got to cooperate. If you're willing and obedient, that's Isaiah 1 and 19. Then you'll eat the good of the land. So I like to add on a little tidbit. Now, I'm not adding to the word, but you got to personalize the word. If I'm willing and obedient, then I'll lose the rest of this weight. That's eating the good of the land. Getting to the shore. If I'm willing and obedient, then I'll have money in the bank. If I'm willing and obedient, I'll have good relationships in my life. Oh, don't nobody want to see? See, what my help? What my help at? If I'm willing and obedient, I'll wake up with a good disposition, with a God disposition. Willing and obedience, willingness and obedience is us sitting at the table with the Lord and saying, okay, God, I want to cooperate with you. And God say, all right, do this, do that, do the other. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do, I don't want to exercise for, for, for an hour. I don't want to exercise for 30 minutes. And he's like, exercise is going to do more for your mind than it does your body, Lacey. I'm not talking about you using that as a method to lose weight. I'm talking about that you using that as a method to process your emotions. Because you're emotional sometimes, boo. <laughs> Why we got an attitude with the <laughs> dance break? Get back right. Get back right. Remember, how can we expect people to do for us that we don't do for ourselves? How can we expect our kids to obey us when we don't want to obey God? Lacey, get up at get up at four o'clock to exercise. I don't want to do that. Well, I gotta get up so early. He's like, cause you be tripping when you don't get on the treadmill and talk to me. Oh. Okay. I ain't got a lot of amens. Ladies, I need to drink more water. I don't want to drink water. Water's nasty. Oh, okay. Well, go ahead and let your organs shrivel up. Because <laughs> you need water. You need water for your kidneys to flush out all that crap. <laughs> Put it into it. <laughs> I'm sure the Lord don't. The Lord don't say crap. That was my, that was my imagination right there. But at any rate, he's like, drink water. I don't want to drink water. It's, it's nasty. It's poison. It's like. So how can we expect <laughs> people <laughs> expect our kids to obey? And we won't obey God. Go, just go lay down. Go, go to bed early. I got to finish my show. It's like, what the heck? If you don't, and he's like, Lacey, if you don't rest well, just go and lay down and talk to me while you go to sleep. I'll talk back to you, baby. Talk to me. I, I got to finish my show. He's like, well, fine. That show is going to seed something in you and then you're going to have a demonic dream and then, <laughs> then you're going to wake up feeling weird. <laughs> All right, let me get on to some of these notes. Okay, listen, you always have a choice to let 
fear rule you or let faith rule you. That is your choice. You have a choice. God has given us a choice. You have a choice to let faith rule or fear rule. Both of them can't be ruling at the same time. And that's where we get the roller coaster. That's where we get the, the double-mindedness. That's where we get the wavering on the sea. In faith, out. In faith, out. In faith. Letting faith rule, faith don't rule. I believe God over here, I don't. All right. So, fear rules based on past pain. Fear will rule you based on past pain. The power of fear dwells in the past. That was a word. The power of fear dwells in the past. The power of fear dwells in the past. It dwells in the place of your imagination based on a past pain. And here's the enemy. Wait, 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 wait. Remember the last time you did that? What happened? Remember? You remember back in 1982? What happened when you what happened when you open up your heart? Yep, somebody crashed it. Don't do it. <laughs> did anybody it was, did that make sense? So the power of fear is based in past pain. And he brings that pain up to right now. And you put up a wall and you say, mm, now nah, I don't think so. Wait, remember the last time you went for that job interview? What happened? I didn't get the job. See? Forget it. Stay in the boat. Don't you take up that oar. Don't you roll. Don't you do it. You're going to be disappointed. But guess what? You're going to be disappointed and full of regret staying stuck. He don't tell us that part. Come on. He don't tell us. Listen, the enemy will not tell you if you stay stuck, you're going to regret it. I'll drink to that. He don't tell you that. If you stay in this stuck relationship, if you stay full of bitterness, if you stay not moving, if you stay and you never reach out, if you stay and you never jump and you're full of fear, he will not tell you you're going to regret it. He lies and say, stay safe. Say, don't you do it. Don't you, you better not jump. Don't you jump. It's scary out there. Don't do it. And we can spend years. I was stuck for 40 years. I was stuck for 40 years, y'all. For real. Afraid of my shadow. You want me to show you? And I've showed you this before. I don't think you ever seen, seen it, Miss, Miss Exuberant. Let me show you what stuck me look like. I'm going to show you. Let me see. Let me see. Where is stuck Lacey? Let me show. Maybe I have to scan back in my other. Here we go. This is stuck me. I was 305 pounds worth of stuck. The song is Lecrae, who's a Christian artist, entitled Get Back Right. What's your stuck? What's your stuck picture look like? Oh, 
I love, I love, I love, love, love TikTok and the vulnerability that some people are putting themselves out there with their journeys and they're out there. And, and I saw a guy this morning on his journey to better health and just showing his body, where he is, his progress. What do your, what, what does your picture look like? Ain't that something to think about before we judge somebody else's picture? And I'm not talking about this picture in general. I'm just talking about the reality of what stuck looks like. Forty years worth of stuckness. I ate like I was stuck. And guess what? I started eating like her again. Don't you know you can make promises to yourself and not keep them? I promised. I promised I wouldn't eat like that again. But guess what? I did. And listen. I. Listen. When you don't choose faith. You automatically default. All right, I need somebody to write that down. When you don't choose faith, it's an automatic default, baby. I'm going to say that one more time. When you don't choose faith, you automatically default. I did not have to try to eat like that. I automatically defaulted to eating like I was a stuck person. Why? Because I didn't actively choose faith. I chose fear. I chose self-pity. I chose self-loathing. I didn't know I had a choice. Oh, come on now. I just bind hopelessness. Hopelessness gives the hopelessness gives the imagination that you don't have a choice. I take authority over the spirit of hopelessness in Jesus' name. You always have a choice. Hopelessness gives hopelessness is an imagination. I don't have a choice. I don't have another choice. Like I don't have a choice. You think I'm like I don't have a I didn't think that I had a choice. Until I chose. Oh, you don't hear me right there, honey. I didn't think I had a choice until I chose, until I finally got done. You know what? Well, you know the word I was going to say, right? <laughs> I got, I, I just looked in the mirror one day and I said, after all that crying, listen, after crying and spitting and falling out and begging God to do something about it, not just about my weight, but about my mind, about my life. Do something, God. Deliver me. Because all I want to do is hurt me. And he looking like. I already delivered you by way of the cross. <laughs> I already delivered you, Lacey. Help me, God. Help me, help me, help me. No, what I wanted, what I wanted God to do was to do it for me. I, I can be honest with me. I'm I'm vulnerable. I'm an open book. And I'm gonna tell you the truth. I said, God, the real truth was is I need you to do this for me. Because it's gonna take too much doggone effort <laughs> for me to do anything. It takes effort to pick up those oars and roll. It takes effort. Take some backbone. Back gonna be hurt. Oh my God, that big head. He like. Pick up the oars and roll. He said, I'm with you, but you're gonna have to roll. Why? Because your thoughts and your actions got you out here. Your thoughts and your actions got you out into the middle of the water. Now, what you were born into, you had no control over. Your formative years, you had nothing to do with that. 
But you getting out in the middle of this here late, that's on you. It's like, I'm here with you, but I ain't going to roll you out of it. Why? Because you got to voluntarily leave your prison. Oh, my goodness. See? It, see, it always starts getting wound up right near 7 o'clock in the morning. Your thoughts and your actions got you out here. So it's going to take new thoughts and new actions to get you to the shore called your life, called your real life. Self-pity, self-loathing, oh, love, God. And he in the boat with us going, really, Lacey, La <clears throat> really, you're long, really, no, what it is, you want me to do your work for you. He's like, I'm not doing that. You got to renew your mind. This is a volunteer, volunteer basis. This is on a volunteer basis. Because you know what? We can still be out in the middle of our lake called Pitiful. <laughs> and he'll still love us. He'll still love us. Right there in the middle of our pitiful lake. And we're not moving. But there's a whole destiny on the other side. That we got to be willing to go to. All right. So listen, you always have a choice. And fear is ruled by past pain. Faith leads because of the love of God resting in your heart. So the one thing we've got to conclude, number one, is that God loves me. Period. God loves me. Period. I don't care if you have to go through the whole day saying that one thing. God loves me. God loves me. Not here. Until it shimmies and shifts and it hits you here. And then it shimmies and shifts and hits you in your spirit. And you can you can live. You can live from that when it hits your spirit. When it hits your spirit and it hits your core, it hits the core of who you are. You can live out of that. Mm -hmm. Who know what I'm talking about? When at first is up here, you're like, God loves me. Yay. But then you this. And then it hits you here in your heart. God loves me. All right, God loves me. Okay, I feel that. I feel. And then it, it explodes in you like an atom bomb in your spirit. And you like, wait a minute. God loves me. And your, your, your DNA gets it. And that's what you're able to live out of. And no matter what happens, you have that standard. God loves me. I know it's hard. I'm crying. I'm mad. And I want to fight. But God loves me. And I know this isn't his way that he wants me to go. All right. Let me get to nugget number one. This is actually nugget number one. So I had that uh, little precursor that you always have a choice to let fear rule or let faith lead you. Fear rules you. Faith leads you. Fear rules you. Faith leads you. Fear rules you. Being angry is a manifestation of fear. What are you afraid of? Fear rules you. Faith leads you. Fear rules you. It drives you. Faith leads you. He leads me beside still waters. He leads me beside still waters. It's a volunteer thing. You have to volunteer to walk with God. He ain't gonna drag you. Deliver me. It's all I wanna do is hurt me. He like, I gave you my blood. I gave you my word. I'm not doing it for you. <laughs> how, all right. How many people have really come to realize that? That God will not do for you what he's given you the authority to do. He said, behold, I've given you authority to trample over scorpions and snakes. And of all the power of the enemy. 
and nothing in any wise, in any means shall harm you. He said, I've given you the power to do it. And how many have realized that he said, he's like, I'm not doing anything. I've given you the power to do. I've given you my blood. I've given you my word. I've given you my promise that I'm here with you. Now you do it. Because he is bent on our maturing. God ain't going to give me the keys to a hundred million dollar car. And I can't even drive my escort, my escape around and pee. <laughs> Come on now. Who would do that? Who would give their 10-year-old the keys to their car? Knowing the damage that could be done. God is like, I'm after your maturity. Because in order to carry more weight in glory, more weight in your business, more weight in your finance, more weight in your maturity, you're going to have to do just that. Mature. All right, so let's get to one more, okay? <clears throat> Listen, when you have new information, you know you have access to a choice you didn't have before. So when you have new information, you actually have access to a choice that you didn't have before. When God tells you and opens up the door to you and lets you know, you do have a choice. You don't have to do that. It's your choice. But guess what? He loves us even if we make the wrong choice. But we don't get to move forward. Is anybody else taking notes other than Miss Exuberant? Let me know if you're taking notes. Let me know if I need to show the notes again. Just, just say me or raise your hand or something. Let me know if you're taking notes. When you have new information, you now have access to a choice you didn't have before. You have access to a choice. You have access now because you have new information. And you're like, what? You have access. So my friend uh, <clears throat> said to show the notes again. I think I'm going to go over one more point. Ooh, wait, this is good, Lord. It's, this is, I'm all right. Okay, focus, Lacey. I'm going to show this first and then I'm going to go over this last point for today, okay? Let me mirror this so you can get this. Okay. Let me, let me get this up right. Uh-oh, wait a minute. Okay, there you go. Wait. Okay. There you go. All right, there you go. Okay. One, two... I need to see some goddess and then I'm going to count. Okay. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Woo! Girl. Oh my goodness. I think that means I need to lift it up more. Lift it up. All right, so let's get to this last nugget for today, okay? All right. Get this one, honey. Look. Number three. Listen, the pressure from God, the pressure to change, the pressure from God only lasts as long as we resist his way. And I need my chapstick on that one. Where's my, where's my, uh, hold on a second before I get into that one. Uh, uh, I'll be, I'll, I'm excited in, in about a month or so. 
I'm going to be moving into an office. And I'll be able to get my kitchen table back <laughs> and get my backdrop together. For real, for real. All right, let me get the number three. The pressure from God only lasts as long as we resist his way. <laughs> ah. The pressure from God only lasts as long as it takes for us to submit. When we submit, the pressure leaves. <laughs> The pressure is for us to bring our flesh under subjection and obey. Ain't that a good word? Listen, it is not the Lord's intent to have nonstop pressure on us. But remember the scripture about the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. The flesh is the problem. <laughs> the flesh. The carnal mind. The flush. <laughs> Uh, old Southern Mississippian people, uh, 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 Southern people, the flush. It is the flush that needs to be flushed down the toilet. The flush, the carnal mind, my will and emotion, the part of us that think we're grown and can't nobody tell me what to do. Listen to this. This is so interesting. There's no such thing as atheism or agnosticism and all of that. There are no people who really do not, not believe that there's a God. There's only rebellious people that hate the reality that there is a holy God that wants to lead their life. And that's the real, that's the issue with God, with people. It's not that there's a God or that there isn't. People just generally don't like to be told what to do. Even babies. That rebellious nature that I talked about from the beginning. It's still there. And as a whole, without Holy Spirit, we do not like to be told what to do. We do not, in general, like authority. And so that's the part with atheism, it's not that there's not a God. It's just people don't like to be told what to do. And I cannot get it in my mind that there's a God that wants to rule my life. He don't want to rule your life. He want to lead your life. Was that good? And there's a religious system. Not, 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 not pure religion, but a religious system that says, I want to look godly. Without obeying God. I want to just look. You know. It says. Uh, having a form of godliness. But denying the power. What's the power? The power to lead you. The power to restore you. The power to. For signs. Wonders and miracles. That power. I don't want no God like that. I, look, I don't want nobody telling me nothing. And we might not do all of that. Expression. But it's on the inside. Like, I, 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 I'm grown. And then you got four and five-year-olds talking about they grown. Telling the parents what to do. It's the rebellious, endemic nature that has to be brought under subjection to Holy Spirit and the Word of God every single day. Let me help you out. This is a good, this is going to be a good nugget. Please write this down. The Word of God. To us. I'm sorry, y'all just drink some water. The word of God to us is the anti rejection medicine for our bodies. Just like a person who receives an organ, they have to take anti rejection medicine. Was that was that a good nugget? And and there's such a I, I really feel such a intentionality from Holy Spirit to get in the word like never before. Because it is the anti-rejection medicine 
for our body, for our soul, for us. Because guess what? Only one person was born with the Holy Spirit. Tell me who it was and I'll send you a gift. Tell me who that one person was that was filled with the Holy Spirit. That was born with the Holy Spirit. One person in all eternity that was born with the Holy Spirit because of the assignment on his life. Mm -mm. No, not Jesus. Oh, that's so good. That's so God. Only one person was born with the Holy Spirit in all eternity. Let me find this scripture right here, baby. Oh, this is so good. All right. Who, who just bust my bubble? Yep, John the Baptist. <laughs> I was just going to find the scripture. I still need to find the scripture, though. Let me find the scripture. Let me find that. Unless the other Bible scholar want to go ahead and bust that bubble, too, and tell us where it's at. John the Baptist. When Martha, well, no, Elizabeth, when Elizabeth came upon Mary and Mary gave salutation, spoke to her, the baby in Elizabeth's womb leaped and was filled with the Holy Spirit. In other words, none of us were born with the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is foreign to all of us. Yes, I know it's Luke 1 and 41. Thank you, Bible scholar. Well, that's my exuberant queen. Hi. So it's foreign. So when we're filled with the Holy Spirit, it's foreign. Our spirit man loves it. Our spirit man is like, oh, this is good. <laughs> our spirit is like this. <laughs> While our flesh and our mind is like this. I ain't doing none of that. <laughs> running things for too long up in this mug. I ain't doing none of it. I don't know what you think you gonna do. But no. Because we've been running things. In the soul, the mind, the will, and the emotions. The emotions are over in the corner crying. <laughs> the will is like, mm -mm, ain't nobody telling me nothing. <laughs> And the mind is like this, huh? Who? What? Huh? What? What we gonna do? Huh? What? 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 Where we going? Ain't that good? The flesh, yep, the flesh is not negotiating with the spirit. The flesh has to be brought under subjection to Holy Spirit. So we have Holy Spirit on the inside of us. Holy Spirit is foreign. We have to make his home comfortable by taking our anti-rejection medicine on a daily basis called the word of God. Jesus said that the words that I speak are spirit and life. Since it's medicine, where is that scripture? Oh, wait. Oh, I, I got it in there. Hold on. It, well, it's more than our necessary food. And let me give you this scripture here and then I'm going to be done. Hold on. Okay. Go to Okay. 
Go to Psalms 19. Okay, Psalms 19. I'm, let me write this down right quick. Psalms 19, 7 through 10. Honey, when I found this in the Word, honey, it just did something to me. I tell you what. Yep, the Word of God is the anti-rejection medicine for our soul. We need, we need, Holy Spirit is on the inside of us. And the Word of God is our anti-rejection medicine. I tell you what, for all of my fellow sisters and brothers that's been walking with the Lord for a little bit, put, please put in the comment how you feel if you miss your word for a couple of days, a, a week or so, and you ain't read or meditated on any scripture. Put in the comments how you feel. Put in the comments what's be going, what be going on. Because I know I ain't tripping. Honey, let me miss, let me miss three, four days. I am a hot mess. No defense at all. You talking about demonic pop-ups. Honey, it's on and popping. Straight carnal. Temptations out, out the roof. And no ability to resist. Give, give, honey, if I miss a week without the word, Going on vacation and not reading? I, I, I've done that before. And have been absolutely toe out the frame by the time I get back. And I'm like, what's wrong with my mind? So, yes, baby. It's bad. Is it? Did I say something? Let me go there. Okay. Yep, yep, depressed, horrible, it just awful. Wonder what in the heck is wrong with my head. You ain't been taking your anti-rejection medicine. All right, so we're going to go uh, verse 7 through 10. No, wait. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so that's Psalms 19. 7 through 10. Thank you guys for responding, for telling me the truth. I go a few days and I know I haven't been in the word, meditating on some scripture. Yep, road rage, just angry. I'm road raging. That's that fleshy nature getting back in the driver's seat of our life. That's that fleshy nature like, yeah, I'm back. Hey, hey, I'm back and I'm the end of the fight. Yeah, hey. I'm finna fight and cuss. I wanna cuss. Eat all the junk I want and stay up late and watch your nasty movies. <laughs> Y'all. All right, Lacey, focus. I'm trying to focus, but that's funny. Cause a lot of flesh is. The flesh is like, yeah, mm, mm. Doing all the nasty TikTok dance. And then we hear a verse of scripture and we like, what am I doing? <laughs> All right, let me get to the scripture, then I'm going to be done, okay? <laughs> it's just funny, but the flesh is off the chain. I know my flesh is off the chain, y'all. I miss some days in the word. And I'm telling you, I'd be like, honey, I'll get back with you. I ain't even scared of you. Girl, I'll be all rude to cashiers and stuff. Be all road ragey. Grandma driving the speed limit and I'm mad at her. Don't you slow my momentum because I got to get to my Lord. And Jesus is like, why are you speeding? You just going to Myers and you trying to do 70 on a side road. Would you stop? Okay, scripture. Listen, I'm going to turn my music off because that's going to signify that I'm getting done for real, okay? Because this is going to blow your mind if you haven't read this before. Read it in a couple of different translations too. But I love, I love the Amplified because it's needy. Okay, listen. <laughs> It's meaty. Okay. So, 
Psalms 19, verse 7 through 10. The law of the Lord is perfect. Restoring the whole person. The testimony of the Lord is sure. Making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right. Rejoicing the heart. The commandments of the Lord is pure and bright, enlightening the eyes. That's just verse 7 and 8. There is no other book that can make that claim and have the power to back it up. I'm just going to sit right there for a minute. Hold on. And then I'm going to read it again. <clears throat> All right, let me read this again. Honey, when I found that scripture, I, I was just, it, I, it made me slide to the floor. I'm like, Lord, I've never seen that before. There's no other book that has ever been written. No other book who would dare. My God. Who would dare make that claim? Look at our God, honey. I'm going to read 7 and 8 again. That, it just blesses my soul. The law of the Lord is perfect. Restoring, restoring the whole person. The testimony of the Lord is sure. Making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right. Rejoicing the heart. The commandments of the Lord is pure and bright. Enlightening the eyes. The reverential fear. The reverent fear of the Lord is clean. Enduring forever. The ordinance of the Lord are true and righteous all together. Honey, don't forget, see. It says, there's a part of a song uh, by Israel Holden. What does it say? Lord, we declare who can compare, who would even dare. There is no one like you. Lord, we declare who can compare, who would even dare. There is no one like you. Lord, we declare, who can compare? Who would even dare? There is no one like you. Lord, we declare, who can compare? Who would even dare? There is no one like you. There is no word. There's no book. Nobody. No false religious God, Buddha, Krishna, all these fake false religions. Nothing can make that claim. No other book would dare. Not the Quran. Mm -mm. No other book in all of eternity can make that claim and have the power to back it up. You can make the claim, but you ain't got the power to back it up. Because Jesus says the words that I speak, they're spirit and they're life. And we gotta have his word every day in order to keep Holy Spirit intact. Because Holy Spirit is foreign, but he's at home with us when we take our medicine right. That's why when you find yourself in a period of backsliding in your mind, you don't read your word. What'd you say, Lacey? I said, when you in a period of backsliding in your mind, you don't read your word. You don't want to meditate on it. You don't want to look at no Christian broadcasting or nothing. 
I done sipped my whole cup of water. I ain't got no amens on that. When you know you're in a backslidden position in up here, you don't read your word. You don't want to read it. You don't want you don't want to. There's nothing in you that wants to. Nope. You like, you know what? I'm gonna do that tomorrow. I'm gonna do that tomorrow. A week pass by. I'm gonna do that tomorrow. I'm gonna do that tomorrow. I'm gonna do uh two weeks. I'm gonna do that tomorrow. I'm gonna do next thing you know it's been about it's been a month. I'm gonna do that tomorrow. I'm gonna I'm gonna do that. Uh you then then you wanna you, you don't wanna go to church. You don't wanna look at church. <laughs> You want to any any kind of Christian TikTok creator? You don't want to listen to it. Why? Because the word has convicting power. You know that the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. We don't mind cutting people with the word, but what about us cutting ourselves? What about God saying, yeah, Lacey, you know what? You've been slacking. Yeah, Lacey, you, you over-promise and then you under-deliver. Why don't you just stop? <laughs> Oops. <laughs> and I'm almost done, y'all. So I'm going to read over this scripture again. One of the main ways that we can get our faith out front where it's leading us is staying in the word of God. And that's Psalms, verse number, Psalms, chapter number 19, verse 7 through 10. The law of the Lord is perfect, restoring the whole person. There's nothing else that can restore the whole person. The law of the Lord is perfect, restoring the whole person. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandments of the Lord are pure and bright, enlightening the eyes. The, rever the reverent fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The ordinance of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. Listen, verse 10, more to be desired are they than gold, even than much fine gold. They are sweeter also than honey and dripping from the honeycomb. Yeah. Yeah. Now, the thing about it is, I know some things that there's some neurological stuff that's going on. Seek out help and therapy and counseling and all that stuff that you need to do. So I would never talk against taking your medicine mm -mm. when there are neurological stuff going on, things going on. Take your medicine, honey. And then take your other medicine, the word of God. Because the word of God would not just settle you mentally. It says it will restore you, the whole you. The whole you. So I'm going to say this little thing that I'm going to be out. The One of the mothers that I take. To church with me. We ride together. We were talking one day. And this isn't to shoot down anybody that took the vaccine. A lot of guys took it and that's fine. And we were just talking. She's 78. 78, y'all. And she don't look any she don't look any older than 60. If if 60. Wonderful, wonderful lady. We're driving and we're talking about that. And she said, you know what? They asked me if I was going to take the vaccine. And she said, I told him no. And so we just chatting and everything. And this, these are the words that came out of her mouth. And I knew, I knew the second she said it, that that was directly from God. She said, if the blood of Jesus don't work. No, she said, if the blood of Jesus and the word of God won't heal me won't keep me, won't restore me. She said, I'm doomed already. 
She said, if the word of God and the blood of Jesus don't work, she said, I'm doomed. And I, honey, I wanted to pull over on the side of the road when she said that. I wanted to pull over. I said, what you say, God? So if the blood of Jesus and the word of God ain't enough, she said, I'm doomed. I'm not telling you not to take care of yourself. Yes, do the necessary things. But I tell you what, you better let the blood of Jesus and the word of God be at the forefront of everything. The blood of Jesus, the word of God, take your medicine. Blood of Jesus, word of God, exercise. Blood of Jesus, word of God, obey God. Word of Jesus, word, blood of Jesus and the word of God and everything else falls underneath. That has to be preeminent because he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised. For our iniquity. The chastisement. Good morning my friend. The chastisement of our peace. The chastisement. That was needed to obtain peace. That's what that scripture means. The chastisement. The punishment that was needed to obtain peace. Was laid on him. And by his stripes. We were. Past tense. Were. Were are, were healed. Hmm, honey, I'm telling you, that was a ride. I, I, and, and I don't know, it might have been three, three or four months ago. And I'm still blown away by that word. If the blood of Jesus and the word of God ain't enough, she said, I'm already doomed. I said, just dig a hole and get on at it and cover yourself up. Take the vaccine. But I tell you what, that blood and that word better be on top of that vaccine. And, and many of us aren't taking it because we don't have enough information. And if you got enough and you feel settled enough to take it, take it, baby. But as for me, in this house here, we're going to keep the blood. And the word. That's just where I am. I'm like. Mm, mm. Yep. That word was ingrained on my heart. I'll never forget that as long as I live. If the blood of Jesus and the word of God. Don't do it. So you already do. Get yourself in your grave. Go ahead. Dig your hole and get on in there. Because you done. And they overcame. By the blood of the lamb. And the word of the testimony. So with that, my friends, I could go on and on, but I'm not going to do that because I want to follow God. And it is 732, honey, and we got stuff we got to do. Listen, um, you guys be blessed. Thank you so much. We got to start letting our faith lead us. We have to let faith lead. We have to let our faith get out in front and not our feelings. I don't want my feelings to lead anymore. There's a song about that. Spirit, lead me. Let me see if I can find it right quick so I can play it for you guys, okay? Because it'll, it'll bless you. I don't even know if I got that song in my iTunes. But I'll play this and then we'll be, uh, we'll be done, okay? Okay, um... I'll just find it on YouTube. This song will bless you, okay? Come on up, iTunes. I mean, not iTunes. Uh, what's the name? Okay. Okay. All right. I'm going to play this song for you guys. Okay, I'm going to write it down. It's called Spirit Lead Me. All right, let me give you the name. Michael Keeter, M-I-C-H-A-E-L, Keeter, K-E-T-T-E-R, E-R, and 
influence music. No, not that spirit. Not that spirit lead me. This is a different one. I did see the one with uh, my heel song, but this is a different one. It's Spirit Lead Me, Michael Keeter. You'll be able to find it with that. It's uh, Michael, then Keeter. K-E-T-T-E-R-E-R. K-E-T-T-E-R-E-R. -E -E I'm going to play it now, okay? I'm going to do one better. I'm going to flip it around so you guys can see the words, okay? Hold on a second. I just got that from the Lord, okay? Yeah? Let me see if I can get it just right, okay? Don't 
this is it, y'all. Yeah. Yeah. God, as we end today, God, it is our determined purpose to let your spirit lead us, God. You are not a driver, but you are a leader. God, help us to, I don't know, stay in a place of humility, God. So we will let your spirit lead us, God. You want to lead us to our most authentic place, to our destiny, to the place called there on a daily basis, God. We love you. We want to trust you. We want to let go of our feelings, God, and let your spirit lead us today. In Jesus' name. All right, everybody. That is the song. Spirit lead me. I'm glad you guys um, was able to listen to that. Beautiful song, ain't it? Uh oh, let me turn this camera back. Amen. Beautiful song. So anyway, um, that's that's it. That's a lot of it. But I'm glad you guys were blessed. Find that song, put it on repeat, and let's let let's let Holy Spirit lead us. Let's get our faith out in front, okay? So that we can be led by the Spirit of God. Because the word tells us over in Romans, oh, chapter number eight, that those who are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. That's us. That's us. So anyway, I'm going to get ready and get out of here. I will see you guys hopefully tomorrow. I'm going to let that be my determined purpose to come on maybe Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. I'm going to try that because I do teach a class on Tuesday night and Wednesday be like my recoup day. But who knows, honey, I might pop up on Wednesday too. Just look for me. Uh, put, put it that way. Anyway, y'all have a good day. I love you guys. Thank you so much for your hunger. It makes a difference, I'm telling you. And let Holy Spirit lead us today, okay? He wants to. Sweet Holy Spirit. He's not yelling and screaming at us. He wants to lead us besides still waters and give us his answers, okay? All right. That's it. I'm out, y'all. Y'all have a good day. Thank you for the gifts and the loves and all the high fives and everything. I appreciate you guys. You guys have a wonderful day and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.